Henry Roth is a friendly playboy and marine veterinarian at Sea Life Park in Oahu. He is afraid of commitment, so he tends to jump from one fling to another. Henry's target is usually attractive tourists visiting Hawaii instead of natives, who already knew him as a womanizer. At work, Henry has a close friend named Ula. He is funny, but unhappily married to a local with five adorable young children. A shark attacks Ula, so Henry offers his service to stitch his wound. Ula complains about Henry for not being gentle. Henry laughs, saying he specializes in operating animals, and not him. The veterinarian owns a pet penguin named Willie, who seems to disagree with everything Ula says. Ula's children giggles as they record the funny conversation between their father and Henry. After the operation, Ula asks Henry how his relationship with the hot girl from Ohio went. Henry dropped her off at the airport earlier. He told her he works as a secret agent who is set to go abroad, and cannot continue their relationship anymore. But the lady was persistent, activating Henry's escaping skills. He pretended to be taking an important call and hopped onto someone's jet ski. Ula has been Henry's human diary and knows him well. He teases the playboy that one day, a girl will hinder his plans for a boat trip in Alaska. Apart from Ula, Henry is also close to his bisexual assistant Alexa. An emergency happens at the park, and Alexa rushes to inform Henry about this. He finds the walrus Jocko, weak, lying on the floor. Tourists remain nearby, concerned about the animal's condition. Henry instructs Alexa to check the temperature of the pool. The silly assistant tends to rattle in emergencies. She jumps to the water instead of using the thermometer. Alexa swims back with another task to do. Henry tells her to get two fish from the barrel. Alexa follows, but the fishes she got were warm. Henry rejects it, requesting her to get another one from the bottom. Alexa, who has bad comprehension, dives to the bottom of the barrel for a fish. Henry gives it to Jocko, but there is no response. Seeing Alexa panicking makes Henry irritated. He instructs her to stay calm and stand near Jocko's face. Henry suspects the animal has either ingested a substance or never burped, blocking air from breathing. He revives it by hardly pressing its stomach. He fails on the first try, commanding Alexa to remain in the position and check Jocko's breathing progress. Henry applies pressure again to the animal's body, and this time it works. Jocko puked everything but directly at Alexa, pissing her off. Meanwhile, Henry jumps out of joy with Willie, the penguin, after saving the walrus. Apart from being a veterinarian, Henry is also a certified sailor. He dreams of visiting Bristol Bay, an unspoiled walrus habitat. To prepare for his great journey, he tests the capacity of his vessel, Sea Serpent, by taking a trip around the island of Oahu. Early on November 5th, he starts the longest voyage his boat has ever taken. Henry raises the sails, but the mass collapses, hitting the stirring wheel of the vessel. Henry abandons it and rides on a lifeboat to reach the shore. While waiting for the Coast Guard to tow his boat, Henry dines at Hukulau Cafe. Sue, the cafe manager, greets the man while taking his orders. Henry wants to have coffee because he has already consumed his all-time favorite Reese's peanut butter cup and Gatorade. Sue doesn't regard those as breakfast, so she offers him spam and eggs. Sue's husband, Nick, is in charge of the kitchen. He teases Henry if he wants breakfast with peanut butter as well. Henry reads the newspaper when a light bothers him. He looked round to see where it is coming from, and realizes it is being reflected from the knife of a blonde girl in a pink shirt. His playboy mode activates, seeing the pretty woman. She is Lucy, a sweet girl who eats breakfast every day at the cafe. Sue gives her the coffee and waffles she requested. Henry observes her as she cuts the meal. Lucy forms a volcano-like structure with the waffles, while the coffee's steam makes it look like it is erupting. Henry is amused by her creativity and can't get his eyes off her. While performing an ultrasound with his assistant, Henry shares his encounter with the blonde girl yesterday. He finds her cute but assumes she is a local, turning him off to pursuing her. Alexa wonders why he is afraid of commitment. It seems like he's traumatized by an ex-girlfriend in high school, who cheated on him for cute boys. Henry confirms her guess is partly correct. It was an ex-girlfriend in college choosing an old professor over him. The next day, Henry returns to Hukulau Cafe, hoping to bump into Lucy again. He seems to be lucky because Lucy is right in front of him. Nick greets Henry, calling him Mr. Peanut Buttercups. Henry is not a regular customer of the cafe, making Nick wonder why he is visiting. The man replies he cannot get over the spam he prepared last time. He wants to order it again with some fried eggs. Nick is flattered, not knowing that he only came for Lucy. Lucy wears the same pink top like last time. Similarly, her meal is still the waffle, and she makes a house with it. Henry finds it cute and helps her out. He gets a toothpick and uses it as a hinge for the house's door. Lucy finds his idea smart because she has never thought of that before. Lucy introduces herself to the man, thanking him. Henry grabs the chance to hold her hands while saying his name. He also expresses amusement with her craft, telling her to keep it up. Lucy learns he sits alone, so she invites him to her table. Henry is delighted but never shows a smile to keep his intention a secret. He accepts Lucy's offer to get to know her even more. Sue is intrigued by Henry sitting with Lucy. She knows the man is a playboy, so she fixes her eyes on them while she works. Lucy assumes he is an architect because of the hinge idea. 
Henry shares he works with fish but does not disclose his profession. It makes sense for Lucy because he smells like a fish. Henry apologizes while wiping his hands. He fed the walrus earlier, which could be why he stinks. Henry does not believe her saying she loves the strong smell of fish. Lucy's father and brother, Doug, are fishermen and go out to the sea for months. At times they are gone, and Lucy is left alone at the house, missing them. Soon after they return, Lucy would hold their hands for five minutes each, and it would smell like fish. The best smell in the world, as she calls it. Henry finds her adorable, watching her contagious smile. He jokingly offers his hands to be sniffed by her. Surprisingly, Lucy holds it, not complaining about how it smells, and sniffs them. Hours pass, and customers leave, but Henry and Lucy are still talking. Lucy burst into laughter after Henry's joke. The man loves hearing her laugh, while Lucy likes how he makes her happy. Sue interrupts them, saying they need to set up the diner for lunch. Outside, Henry shares how mysterious walruses are. Studies on how wild they are on the water are not yet explored. Existing knowledge about their behavior is mostly recorded when they are on the land, entertaining guests like Jocko. Such research gap interests Henry, which is his dream to explore soon. Lucy is amused, thinking walruses are not wild, sleeping on icebergs while yawning all the time. After their unending conversation, Lucy bids goodbye because today is her father's birthday. To celebrate the day, Lucy and his dad go for a long drive to pick pineapples. Eventually, it became a tradition they do yearly. Henry thanked her because he had a great time. Similarly, Lucy loves his company and invites him again for tomorrow to have a meal together. Lucy thinks it's the best idea before going to the art class at 10 a.m. The lady teaches art, which keeps her busy most of the time. Henry is delighted, promising to arrive on time tomorrow. Lucy shakes his hand, and sniffs it again for the last time before separating ways. A van separates their parked vehicles, so Lucy does not hesitate to dance out of the joy she feels meeting Henry. Similarly, on the opposite side, Henry dances wildly after being invited again by a pretty lady. Soon after the van leaves, the two find themselves dancing like crazy. They stop grooving when their eyes meet, realizing how awkward it is. The next day, Henry plays golf with Ula and his kids. Everyone laughs, seeing Ula pissed off after a bad strike. He is not good at golf, so he attempts just to throw the ball to the goal. His children can't stop laughing seeing their dad's reaction, who failed to hit the ball. Ula challenges them to strike, which the kids gladly accept. They lined up five balls for each and strikes them together. The kids hit the goal effortlessly, making Ula jealous of their athletic move. Out of nowhere, Ula opens up meeting a good-looking, blonde tax attorney at Starbucks. Ula shipped her to Henry, saying he is the best man to contact in case she wants to take a vacation in Hawaii. Ula raises a paper containing the lady's contact number to tempt Henry. Surprisingly, the womanizer Henry refuses the offer, dismaying Ula. A kid shouts to Ula about his stitch bleeding. He requests Henry to close his wound, but he wants to surf first. Another man playing golf overhears him. He warns him to avoid surfing in the sea with an open wound, because it might attract a shark. Ula disagrees because sharks are naturally peaceful. The old man never believed him after learning he got the bleeding stitch from a shark's bite. Henry continues playing golf. He panics after hitting the ball too much, leading it to a cliff. Henry is having difficulties finding it after it lands on the shore. Suddenly, an attractive hand catches his attention. It was Lucy, and she got the ball. Surprisingly, the sweet lady acts flirty and seductive, which Henry enjoys. Lucy confesses she visited because she thought of him all day. She can't wait to have another breakfast together. Henry is lying on the field, hearing Ula and the children's laughs. It is only then he realizes he was only daydreaming about Lucy. But according to Ula, he passed out after the golf ball hit the cart and bounced back to his head. Ula and the kids wonder who Lucy is, the name he keeps mentioning. There, Henry confesses he was falling for that girl making him return to the diner daily. The problem is she is a native who may soon discover what a playboy he is. Ula suggests continuing his upcoming meetup with the blonde tax attorney named Noreen. Henry introduces himself as a professional cliff diver in Hawaii. Noreen imagines how fun it would be as a diver because he earns money while enjoying it. She feels jealous because tax attorneys like her rarely take a vacation to have fun. Henry notices the girl is flirting with him. She also pretends to be intoxicated and weak to tempt him. Noreen asks Henry about his thoughts. The man imagines Lucy and her smile. He swears not to replace her with the girl he only met. Henry confronts Noreen by telling her to stop pretending to be drunk. There is no alcohol content in the drink she finished earlier. Henry knows it because he also acts intoxicated to take advantage of lovely tourists to fall in love with him. Noreen is too stunned to speak after his frank statement. Henry continues talking, revealing he is not a cliff diver because he is afraid of heights. But Noreen is persistent in seducing him. Henry suggests his assistant Alexa, whom she could date for her remaining days on the island. Noreen is confused because the unattractive man looks like a girl. The next day, rain pours hard, but it doesn't hinder Henry from visiting the diner. Sue tells him to go home because they are close today. She only did it knowing Henry was flirting with Lucy the other day. The man doesn't listen and stays in his chair. 
Henry greets Nick as Tattoo Face after teasing him as Mr. Peanut Butter Cups. Unlike Sue, Nick gladly welcomes him to the diner. Henry orders the Spam and Eggs combination, like the last time. Lucy arrives wearing a pink shirt and white trousers again. Henry confidently talks to her. Lucy greets him back but reads again the book she has brought with her. Henry sits before her, offering his stinky hands to be sniffed. Earlier, he patted the walrus at work and confesses he keeps thinking of her. Lucy freaks out, calling him a pervert. She demands the man leave her alone. Henry wonders if he said something wrong, because she looks irritated by his presence. Lucy is pissed off since she doesn't know him. He keeps insisting they met yesterday, which she doesn't recall. Lucy asks for Nick's help because the guy won't leave her. Nick has no idea she was referring to Henry. Sue pulls Henry outside the cafe to talk to him. She informed the man that Lucy is a special person. A year ago, Lucy was involved in a terrible car accident with her dad, Marlon. They had gone on a long drive after harvesting pineapple for his birthday. Suddenly, a cow came in the middle of the road, and Marlon lost control of the vehicle. The car crashed on a tree, where her father broke some ribs, and Lucy suffered a serious head injury. She lost her short-term memory, and she only remembers things that happened before the accident. Incapable of converting short-term memories to long-term memories, Lucy wakes up thinking every day is October 13th, her father's birthday. This explains why she eats waffles for breakfast at the diner daily, wearing the same shirt. She came to the restaurant before the accident, which is the last thing she remembers. Hearing that, Henry realizes that Lucy doesn't remember him even if they only met yesterday. Lucy has no idea of the accident. Her dad and brother don't want her to recall the tragic incident either. To make it possible, Marlon and Doug reenact the activities of October 13th. Marlon also printed out several copies of the newspaper of that day, and puts them on the porch for Lucy to avoid confusion. After having breakfast at the cafe, Lucy is bound to go home to go with her father to pick pineapple for his special day. It can be seen that Lucy bids goodbye to Henry for the same reason. If there is a thing that Marlon changes in the reenactment, is having the pineapple ready before Lucy arrives. The lady wonders why he picks it up without her. Marlon pretends that a vendor gave it to him as a birthday present. He accepts it so as not to hurt his feelings. Lucy believes in him and lets it pass. She teases her father that the vendor might have a crush on him. To kill the time they would have traveled to get the pineapples, and the hours of the accident, Marlon lets Lucy draw something on the workshop he newly painted with white. As an art enthusiast, Lucy finds the wall doll. She plans to add colors to make it look alive, but before starting, she asks her dad to promise her they will pick up pineapples together on Thanksgiving. Marlon nods yes, anyway, tomorrow will be another October 13th for her. Lucy is a fan of the Minnesota Vikings. Today is their game, so she instructs her dad to turn on the television. The game happened more than a year ago, so Marlon watches it through a videotape he keeps in a box. He is right on time playing it as Lucy comes home to see her idols. Marlon has got tired of repeatedly watching the tape, so he plays a card game while sitting on the couch. Similarly, Doug has memorized the Vikings' moves, spoiling them for Lucy. He makes a bet with Lucy that once the Vikings lose, she will be the one to wash the dishes. The innocent lady has no idea, and accepts the deal. In the end, Doug wins, amusing Lucy. Marlon throws slippers at him for taking advantage of his sister's condition. Before the day ends, Lucy sings a happy birthday song to his dad with Doug. Marlon and Doug are on point in their acting, pretending they did not do it for countless times. Lucy compliments his dad as someone who doesn't get old. Meanwhile, Doug shows Lucy the muscles he worked on so hard. Marlon stops him saying he wants to throw up seeing his body. Lucy giggles with their little fights while giving a birthday present to her dad. It's the Sixth Sense movie, his favorite. Lucy invites the boys to watch it later after she does the dishes. Marlon and Doug grant her request even if they have memorized the dialogue already. Doug eats cake while Marlon naps beside his sister. Lucy, on the other hand, is focused, watching as if she has never seen it. The boys love to see her reactions at the end of the film. They are also happy knowing the day will end, and they can finally rest. Lucy kisses them goodnight before sleeping. She thanks them for making her day enjoyable. Marlon and Doug breathe deeply because there's more work to do while Lucy sleeps. The first task is to get rid of the cake and wrap the gift again. Doug gets another pineapple from the locked freezer outside. Meanwhile, Marlon grabs another newspaper for tomorrow. He has several piles of them behind the cabinet. He also throws Lucy's pink shirt and white trousers in the washer. Doug goes to the bathroom, filling her sister's favorite shampoo. To end the tiring day, they work together painting the workshop's wall with white, prepping it for the next day. All these are the sacrifices they make for Lucy to make her forget the traumatic experience. On the same night, Henry fixes the sea serpent with Ula. There, Henry shares about Lucy's condition. Instead of sympathizing with the girl, Ula thinks Lucy is a perfect match for Henry since he hates commitment. He will surely enjoy flirting with her, and can effortlessly escape the fling stage when Lucy wakes up. Henry makes it clear he is serious about Lucy. Ula warns him because he will do exactly what Marlin and Doug do. Apart from that, he is bound to leave the island for an expedition. Henry orders him to shut up and do a final inspection before they test out the vessel around the vicinity. Henry is delighted to fix the boat before midnight, not until he sees Ula stuck in a hole. 
Lula stays in position, afraid of his stitches to open. The next day, Henry sets foot at the cafe despite Sue and Nick's warning. Sue is a great friend of Lucy's late mother. This explains why she protects her so much, especially with her condition. Henry knows he is banned from entering the diner, so he talks to Nick first to ask for permission. Nick allows him, confident that Lucy won't speak to him either. Henry boasts to the man about making a girl cry for his attention. He believes it will be effortless to ask Lucy for her time to talk to him. Henry is willing to bet 20 bucks if Lucy doesn't notice him. Nick is thrilled and wishes him the best. Sue smiles, delighted to see Lucy again. However, her blood boils, bumping into Henry. He assures her he talked to Nick earlier and asked permission to see Lucy. Hearing that, Sue allowed him but glared at Nick. Henry sits near Lucy, who is busy building a house with a waffle. Henry stares at Nick as he pulls a toothpick to offer it as a hinge to the waffle door. Lucy smiles as he places the toothpick in the house. But, she expresses hate to Henry for touching her meal. On the first day of the attempt, Henry fails. Nick makes fun of him as he exits the diner. The next day, Henry tries another approach. He shows Lucy a drawing of a father and son fishing and a walrus nearby. Henry believes Lucy will fall for it since she likes art and her family is fisherman. However, it did not work. Lucy pretends not to understand the English language for him to disappear. Sue bursts laughing, while Nick dances out of joy because the man now owes him 40 bucks. Henry never gives up, visiting the diner for his third attempt to talk with Lucy. She is staring at the house she made out of waffles. Henry tries another approach and starts crying like a baby. He pretends as someone who doesn't know how to read. As a teacher, Lucy offers to read the menu for him. Henry refuses, reading pancakes as panclocks. He cries out of embarrassment, resting his head on the table. Lucy feels bad for him because he calls himself stupid. She pats his back, but the man cries even louder, creating a scene at the diner. Nick laughs, amused by Henry's strategy. It is effective because Lucy invites him to sit with her to have breakfast together. Lucy will also teach him some words as they eat. Henry immediately agrees and smiles at Nick for having Lucy's attention. After the tutorial, Henry shows progress in learning the alphabet. He admires Lucy's skills in teaching. The lady shares she is an art teacher at Haluki Licky Junior High. Henry compliments her as the teacher all the students have a crush on. Lucy is flattered, giving a smile to him. Henry tests out if she likes his stinky hands like how she used to when they first met. He apologizes that his fingers smell like fish, asking the lady if it bothers her. Lucy smiles, saying it's fine and she won't mind. It concerns Sue seeing Henry and Lucy having a great time. She blames it all on her husband for allowing Henry in the diner. At the parking lot, Henry opens the door of Lucy's vehicle to let her in. Henry bids goodbye before ruining their established connection. Little did he know Lucy was expecting more. She is disappointed that the man never asked her out or got her number after flirting. Lucy knows he can read but gives him attention since he is exerting effort to talk to her. Henry regrets and follows the lady after she leaves the diner. Sue and Nick witness everything. Sue is worried that Henry might hurt Lucy's feelings. She calls Marlon to inform him that Lucy might return home furious because of a guy. Henry arrives at Lucy's place. He introduces himself to Marlon, asking permission to talk to Lucy and apologize. Unfortunately, Marlon pulls him away from the house. Doug runs, seeing the guy who broke his sister's heart. Marlon requests him to stay away from Lucy. Henry admits to hurting his daughter's feelings but doesn't want to end it like that. Meanwhile, Doug attacks him, but he fails because Henry is stronger. Doug tells the man they have protected Lucy, and they don't want their effort to be useless because of a guy like him. Marlon warns Henry about his daughter's condition, where dating will not work. Lucy will only forget him upon waking up. Marlon requests Henry to stop visiting Hukalau Cafe. Lucy has suffered a lot, and if he truly loves her, he will not add up to the problem. Henry apologizes and leaves after. Alexa is brushing Jocko's teeth when Henry asks him a random question. He promises his dad that he will stay away from his daughter. Henry asks for an advice if he will follow or break it. Alexa believes he must fulfill the promise. However, if he loves the girl, he can stand halfway, following the dad's request but still meeting the lady. Marlon prohibits him from being at Hukalau, so Henry waits for Lucy on the road she usually uses to reach Sue's cafe. For Henry, he is not violating her dad's rule. After minutes of waiting, Lucy's yellow vehicle can be seen from afar, making Henry excited. Before the girl passes him, he pretends to be stuck. He requests if he can jumpstart his car with her vehicle's battery. While connecting the cables, Henry is electrified, making Lucy panic. Henry laughs because he is only joking. However, Lucy cries, recalling her grandpa, who died after jumpstarting a car. Henry apologizes, swearing he did not intend to hurt her. Lucy bursts laughing because she only made that up. The next day, Henry plays as an officer, blocking the road to talk to the lady. The innocent Lucy stops her car. Henry asks him where she came from. Lucy responds by having breakfast at Hukalau Cafe. Henry tells the lady he loves waffles and making houses out of them. Lucy is amused because they have similar habits. Another day means another opportunity to talk to Lucy. Henry brings his cute penguin pet, Willie, wearing a cute shirt. He places the bird in the middle of the road to attract Lucy. The yellow car can be seen from afar, and Henry can't wait to see her. 
Unfortunately, Lucy is picking a CD on the floor, not noticing the penguin. Henry is confused about where Lucy went and why her car is running without a driver. Henry covers his eyes, afraid to watch Willie being hit by the vehicle. Good thing he is safe, but he becomes dirty after. Henry brings his act to the next level with Ula. Lucy sees a man beaten up by someone. Henry instructs Ula not to take it seriously and hits him softly. However, Ula is a good actor, giving his best in the act. Suddenly, a bat landed on his body. Ula realizes it's Lucy, so he runs away as fast as he can, avoiding the lady's bat. Henry feels bad for Ula, seeing Lucy's weapon. He shouts at her to stop, but she won't listen. She is dedicated to saving him from the bad guy. In the end, Ula is able to escape. Lucy returns to Henry and introduces herself. The next day, Henry returns to the road, tying himself to make it seem like he is being held a hostage. He hears a car coming his direction, assuming it's Lucy. Realizing it's a different car, Henry sits back to read the newspaper. Henry tells the car's driver he is fine, and the cops are on the way to untie him. But they are Marlin and Doug, busting his strategy to win Lucy. Out of anger, Marlin summons Henry to his house. Henry knows he's in trouble but remains composed upon arriving at Lucy's place. Surprisingly, Marlin and Doug are not mad. They show him Lucy singing Wouldn't It Be Nice while painting. She never does that before, only after meeting Henry. Marlin is delighted that his daughter's condition is improving a little. Wouldn't It Be Nice is Lucy's mom and dad's song. Whenever Marlin leaves for a fishing trip, Lucy packs the tape into his dad's things. She knows that the song will make her dad miss her mom. Doing so will force his dad to come home sooner. Amazingly, Lucy remembers the lyrics, singing them for the first time after the accident. The next day at the cafe, Henry greets Lucy while she's reading a book. He also asks if he can sit with her since she has no one beside her. Lucy declines, saying she has a boyfriend named Ringo McCartney. Suddenly, Lucy panics, seeing a cop writing a ticket. The lady insists her plates are not expired. She grabs a newspaper to prove her point, however, she discovers something. The date of the paper is not October 13th. Confused, Lucy goes to the shelf to check if they are all the same. Lucy returns home, hungry for the truth. She hits the bell several times, telling his dad she's mad. Marlin calls Doug for support. Lucy trembles seeing the newspapers her dad printed out, especially for her. She runs to the boardwalk to process everything. She cries, kneeling, as she recalls the accident. Henry also helps Marlin and Doug to comfort her. Marlin shows her a compilation of cards, pictures, and a cut part of a newspaper about how terrible the accident was. She was hospitalized for three months before recovering from injuries. Lucy wants to hear her condition straight from the doctor, which she has already heard countless times, according to her dad. Henry offers to take her there, interested to know about it. Marlin drives the car with Lucy and Henry at the back. Lucy gives up reading the book about the accident because she fears flipping another page. Henry tells her to calm down while calling her loose. It irritates Lucy because the man acts as if they know each other. Marlin reminded his daughter she was dating Henry. Hearing this surprised her. Lucy asks more about what happened last October. Someone took over her class while her closest friends were already married. Lucy cannot imagine how they could lie to her every day, and she feels sorry for them. They arrive at the hospital, where the doctor explains everything. He shows the brain scans of Lucy where there is no improvement. Lucy's condition is known as Goldfield syndrome. This explains why she forgets everything when she wakes up. Her brain is incapable of converting short-term memories to long-term ones. Lucy's condition is stable but most likely permanent. The doctor also informs her that it might get worse eventually. He advises her to visit Callahan Institute, the leading brain injury clinic in the Pacific Rim. There, she can find hundreds of people suffering from a similar problem. One of them is Tom, who lost a part of his brain, forgetting information of only 10 seconds. It was already late when they arrived home. Lucy greets everyone goodnight, tired after the long trip. She also thanked Henry for being nice to her all day. Lucy doesn't want to dump him, so she advises him to bring lilies the next day. She loves lilies very much, and Henry can use them to catch her attention tomorrow. Lucy accepts the fact that she will forget Henry the moment she wakes up. At that moment, Henry gets Marlon's approval to date his daughter. He also invites him for a beer with Doug. Henry shares with the boys about his voyage to Bristol Bay to study Pacific walruses. Their topic jumps to Lucy's condition, where Henry tells them that maybe Lucy freaked out early or not because of the accident. But after knowing her life is a setup, Henry wishes for an alternative way to tell Lucy about the accident calmly, without sounding like they are lying to her every day. Before heading home, Henry keeps the book because he plans to do something. The next day, Henry waits for Lucy to return home from the cafe. He gives Lucy the lilies she requested, telling her it came from a secret admirer. The flowers also come with a gift, which is a videotape. Lucy blushes after knowing she has an admirer. She shows the gifts to her dad, making Marlin doubt Henry's strategy. For Henry, it's fine because it will only waste a day if his approach doesn't work. Lucy plays the videotape where the boys show their support by standing behind her. The background music of the video is the song Wouldn't It Be Nice. It greets the lady good morning at the start. This is followed by the things she missed this year. The clips are a mix of politics, sports, and showbiz news. It also includes the accident she got involved in. 
making her forget the recent events. Henry recorded a video of himself explaining how they met. The camera is not steady since Ula's son is holding it. To have a clear picture of their first meeting, Ula plays Lucy wearing a blonde wig and pink shirt like her. Ula is funny, making the teary Lucy burst laughing. In the end, Henry assures her that despite her condition, she got the full support of her family and some of her friends. Sue gives her a heartfelt message telling her how much she cares. She is a close friend of her late mother and promised to take care of her. Sue approves of Henry, telling Lucy he is a nice guy. Nick is also there making a joke that he is the governor of Hawaii. In the end, Henry tells her she can ask questions to clear her mind. Lucy is curious as to how many times she watched the video. Marlon responded it's only today. The videotape seems to be working well for Lucy. After crying at the beach, she gets interested in the accident. This time, she is not afraid to recall the traumatic experience. Henry takes her to the tree where their vehicle had landed. Lucy is glad to see it is also healing like her. The orange rays from the sun make the place romantic. At that moment, Lucy wishes she had met Henry before the accident. The next day, Henry arranges a meet-up with Lucy's friends. She can recall memories of them, but only a few. Her friends admire Henry's dedication to putting Lucy at ease despite her condition. His patience is also admirable in keeping Lucy falling in love with him every day. Days pass and Lucy learns to record everything, especially the moments she spends with Henry. Capturing Henry makes her realize how the man loves her so much. They share their first kiss at the beach that night. From that day on, Lucy and Henry are officially dating. Every day they kiss, Lucy always considers this as the first time, not recalling that it happened yesterday. Their relationship flourishes because of the videotape, so they continue showing it to Lucy every morning. Henry brings her to the aquarium he works at. Lucy is amazed by the different animals, especially the smart Jocko. Later that night, Henry serenades his girl with the song he made for her, titled Forgetful Lucy. It is about how they had a great time on their first meet, and how Lucy forgets him the next day. They return to Lucy's place, where the two try not to sleep. Lucy wants to experience remembering Henry until the next day. Henry asks her to marry him. Lucy giggles saying yes even if their eyes are closed. The next day, Lucy screams out of shock after seeing a stranger beside her. Marlon and Doug leave their match and run to her room. Lucy attacks Henry by throwing things at him. Henry proves they are dating by spilling facts about her. The situation gets worse because Lucy thinks he is a stalker. Marlon and Doug arrive in the room, seeing Henry pass out. Doug rescues him and gives him an ice pack after returning to his senses. Lucy's doctor visits after knowing about the videotape Henry made. He finds it a good move to explain Lucy her condition calmly. The doctor checks the lady after she is done throwing things. He teases Henry by telling him not to worry, because he won't suffer any short-term memory loss. Lucy overhears the boys talking about her. It's her first time learning about Henry's research study in Alaska on walruses. It amazes her because he had planned it for 10 years, including the boat he will use for the expedition. However, it is saddening that he has cancelled it for her. Henry is afraid to ruin Lucy's progress. He is hoping that someday, the lady will retain him in her memory. Lucy is emotional hearing everything, including the fact that it is impossible to happen. Henry leaves after the doctor says there is no chance for Lucy to remember him. He requests Doug not tell the neighbors Lucy beat him up. Henry promises to pick her up later after work. At the Sea Life Park, Henry bathes Willie before taking him to his new home. Meanwhile, Ula is pissing off Henry for eating brownies near the dolphin. Henry calms down after seeing Lucy. Unlike earlier, she is concerned enough to ask him about his head. Henry smiles, telling her he feels better. Lucy brought a diary she wrote after watching the videotape. She logs everything there, especially the moments she spent with Henry. Lucy tells the man she is nervous seeing him, making Henry wonder why. Lucy is breaking up with him. The lady pointed out he had plans and a life before meeting her. But now, all he does is make her fall in love with him every day. Henry denies it, telling her she is not a burden and he still works at the park, bathing his penguin. Lucy realizes how her dad and brother suffered because of her. She doesn't want to drag Henry to her problem as well. Lucy plans to completely erase him from her memory as if he never existed. Henry is bothered by her plan. Lucy further explains he has no future if he stays with her. Specifically, he cannot build a career, a family, and a normal life in their relationship. Henry disagrees because he can reach his dreams, including building a family with Lucy. He even proposed to her yesterday. He sees a future with her. However, Lucy has decided. She wants to make a new diary without him in it. But before doing that, she wants Henry to read the things she wrote for him. Henry agrees, but he will do it tomorrow after she forgets to break up with him. Lucy replied she would still remember it because she would take it down later. Whether Henry likes it or not, she will rewrite the diary tomorrow, asking him to visit her house to witness it. Night comes, and they spend it revising the diary. Henry encodes everything in his laptop with specific dates on when such memory happened. Lucy flips another page, and it is about them. Henry asks her again if she doesn't want to include it. 
Lucy cries, tearing the page from the notebook. Henry has no choice but to continue typing everything for her, even if that means erasing himself from the diary. They printed it and burned the pages they removed, the memories they shared on their many first dates. Henry bids goodbye, heading to his car. Lucy stops him asking if she can have a last first kiss with him. Henry agrees, and they kiss in the rain. The man pulls away before they create another memory that Lucy wants to delete. Good thing for her because she can erase everything the moment she wakes up. While Henry will be stuck, remembering all of it for the rest of his life. Days pass by, and Lucy and Henry continue their life without each other. Lucy paints again while Henry takes care of the animals. It is more painful on Henry's part. Sometimes he spends the night drinking and listening to Marlin's advice that he should continue his voyage. Henry bumps into Lucy one time at the park. She is still pretty in his eyes. However, she doesn't recognize him anymore. Weeks later, Henry is bound to leave the island for his research. Before that day, he bids goodbye to the animals, especially to Jocko. Henry tells Ula's kids to ensure their dad won't be attacked by a shark again. Ula hugs the man asking to buy him a shirt once he returns. Henry hugs them again because he will surely miss their presence. Marlin and Doug also arrive before his departure. They wish him all the best for his long trip. Doug carries a box of Spam and Reese's from Sue and Nick. But after handing the goods, Doug asks him if he can have it all because those are his favorite. Henry laughs and returns them all. Henry asks Marlin about Lucy. Marlin shares that his daughter has stayed at Callahan Institute for three weeks already. Lucy doesn't want to be a burden to her dad and brother. Marlin is glad to inform him she is doing well there, teaching art classes and painting every day. Lucy is also singing like how she used to when they met. Marlin gives him a gift before parting ways. Doug and Alexa waves goodbye to Henry. They seem to get along well, and Alexa is highly attracted to him. While sailing, Henry opens Marlin's gift. It was a Beach Boys CD, making him miss Lucy even more. Henry plays the song and sings loudly with emotions. Henry whines at Marlin for giving a thing that will only make him suffer. Suddenly, Henry recalls what Marlin said. Lucy only sings on days he meets him. At that moment, Henry realizes Lucy remembers him. Henry turns the boat back to the island, canceling his expedition. He rushes to the institute to see Lucy. The patient hears someone shouting, Lucy. Henry finally arrives at the room where she can be found. He is teary, asking Lucy if she remembers him. Unfortunately, the lady said no. Lucy asks his name and brings him to a room where she displays her paintings. Henry is amused seeing his face around the walls. Lucy dreams of him every night, but she doesn't recognize how they are related. Henry explains he used to be a part of her diary, but she erased him there. She tells him to live without her, but she is his life and happiness. Lucy is teary hearing that from him. There is a connection, and they kiss after. Lucy wakes up, not knowing where she is. She sees a tape saying good morning Lucy and plays it. Lucy learns about the accident and Henry, whom she ends up with. Ula leads their wedding ceremony, and they look so happy. She also sees Doug with a woman, and it is Alexa. At the end of the tape, Henry requests her to put on a jacket before going out because it's cold. He also invites her to have breakfast with him. Lucy looks outside the window, and her jaw drops, seeing a majestic view of Alaska. Lucy climbs to the deck, seeing Henry there. She learns they have a daughter, and her dad was also with them on the voyage. Lucy turns emotional, hugging her little girl. Henry kisses her, and it is her amazing umpteenth first kiss. 